guys, Chris here again. This week, we've got a J Custom review. Uh, J Custom is way up at the top range of the Ibanez guitar line. They, I think, might have, there's like the USA Customs and stuff like that, but this is pretty much highest end one you're gonna find at uh, Sweetwater or something like that. And it's really, really cool. It's a guitar I've wanted for quite a while. For you guys who've been watching this channel a while, you've kind of seen me move away from the thinner neck ones, so why did I buy this? Uh, I figured one last go, right? Because uh, this, that's a thin neck. So let's check out what you get on a 2018, I think, J Custom. This is an RG, obviously, due to the shape, and it is a RG8. 570Z, double check that, I think that's what it's called. So, like I said, J Custom, legendary shred guitar, uh, very, very cool, and Ibanez claims this really, they've put basically their best into this, and I uh, thought it'd be cool to compare it, especially, I've, I've had a couple prestiges, I've never had one of these, so curious to see if the craftsmanship's really that different, or maybe you're just paying for the crazy inlay. So up top, non-locking tuners, that's normal because we got a locking system. But again, I know I always say it, but put some locking tuners on there, guys. Costs like 10 bucks, who cares? Well, for them, it cost us 80 bucks, so you'd think they'd just include it. that awesome uh, J Custom Ibanez logo. It looks to be kind of a mother of pearl, maybe a light apple. I think it's mother of pearl. And matching headstock. It's very thin veneer on there, hardly anything. And I think classic shape, right? Ibanez always has a great headstock shape. It's really hard to complain about and just looks classy and shreddy. So always awesome. Uh, on the back of the neck, we have a five piece and it's maple and wenge wood. And clean look, the, the wenge is cool. It's perfectly satin finish. It's really, really nice, comfortable finish on there. And you'll notice right at the volute, you got a mask and then it just transitions into gloss. So the, the back here is very glossy, but there's just a really clean line and then satin all the way down. So. I think the, the finish on the back of the neck is very reminiscent of my other Prestige guitars. They, they have really nice neck finishes, and I'd say this one's on par with that. So, perfectly comfortable neck. The only problem is it's a, called a Super Wizard neck, and oh, it has got to be one of, if not the thinnest guitar necks available that I can remember anyways. Uh, this is definitely the thinnest guitar I've had in a long time and it's really flat. So, if that's your thing, then you're in luck and you're gonna love this. If you struggle with thin neck guitars that are also a bit wide, this is not a, a regular size neck, I don't think. It certainly feels wider, the strings feel further apart. So between being flat, very wide, very thin, I really, really struggle to play this guitar. And I'm not just saying that, this guitar, is extra difficult to play and that is kind of weird because the setup is flawless this thing has the lowest action with zero buzz whatsoever so that's just me that's personal preference it's not that it's a tough to play guitar it's this neck shape and my muscle memory and stuff just i'm struggling so that, that, I guess that's just going to be personal preference. I know a lot of you guys always ask, hey, how's this neck compared to this neck? This is it. This is the thinnest, flattest one I've ever seen. So if that's up your alley, great. If not, probably take a pass because, wow, uh, it's it's what you're used to. If, if I grew up playing this exact guitar, I'm sure it'd be no problem. But I've been struggling, uh, to put it lightly. <laughs> And then we have a rosewood board. Some of the previous ones have ebony. This one, I'm 
pretty sure is rosewood. <laughs> it sure looks like it, so I'm going to say rosewood. And it's actually bound in flame maple, which is awesome. And the binding is like quarter sawn or something. So basically it's got a little bit of that stripey look and the pixely look and it pops out a lot from just the maple on the neck. So I think that is a really nice touch. Looks great. Simple black dots. And then you got the tree of life inlay. These are, it's like the signature J custom inlay. Beautiful work. Um, I'm sure it's CNC'd now because <laughs> you can imagine how long it used to take somebody to inlay that by hand, but I'm sure it's CNC'd uh, because it is flawless. There's no filler or anything like that. And I think it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's a little over the top. It's a little gaudy, um, but it's a cool, iconic look. I think a lot of people uh, see J Customs or, or you know, even the gem has this inlay and you go, man, I really want one of those. It's so crazy. Kind of something to aspire to. Uh, and it's every bit as cool as I thought in real life, except uh, I get super confused on it. Uh, I get completely lost. I mean, obviously there's sort of a thing where, okay, three, five, seven, big leaf, big leaf, big leaf, but that's at a glance, not something you're really gonna notice. And I find myself catching these little leaves thinking, okay, uh, just real quick, go to seventh fret. And I'll go six fret or something like that. And of course, that's on me. Um, not the world's best guitar player. And I'm certainly not one of those guys who doesn't even look uh, while they're playing. So as cool as these inlays are, uh, they throw me off quite a bit. So again, some, some people aren't going to notice at all. But if you're really dependent on inlays, which I typically like them for reference, these are pretty difficult. <laughs> Okay, and then we have 24 jumbo frets. They are not stainless steel, which I think is a little odd on something like this, but fair enough. To make up for that, this guitar has the best rounded frets I have ever seen, except one other guitar which we'll review soon. And it's perfect. What's odd is they call this the prestige fret treatment. My Ibanez prestiges do not have fret ends like this. These are perfectly balled off. They are beautifully done. And the work here really couldn't be better uh, as far as the fit and finish on the neck, the fret work, Obviously, they're dead flat because there is not a single buzz to be found on this thing. The action is super low. So this really does feel one click above an Ibanez Prestige. Uh, so it's not just a name change and a fancy inlay. I think they really did put the extra detail in on there. And it's got to be one of the cleanest fit and finish jobs all the way around that I've ever seen. Um, down to where the wooden binding meets at the corners, that can be hard to get right. Just little stuff like that is flawless on here. So super impressed. Uh, so personally, the neck is for me a little difficult, but it is of the absolute highest quality. Um, and I, I think they did a really, really nice job on it. Body, we have an African mahogany, um, just an RG shape, which most of you guys are probably familiar with it, but RG is kind of Ibanez's classic shape. It's got some contours, not much right here though. and. Really nice neck joint. We'll, we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. But, and we also have a little maple cap on here. The top on this is, I would say medium. Uh, this is not like the world's best looking top, but I feel like maybe it kind of matches what, what they were going for. This is kind of a darker guitar and maybe it's a good fit. I don't really know. Why don't you guys let me know? But I think top good enough. Um, and of course the, the finish, really nice the scrape binding perfect there's just nothing on here i mean it's it's so sharp <laughs> you do great work and there's a couple other little details on here like i noticed these knobs are recessed i do not think they do that on just a prestige rg and tiny detail but it, it adds kind of a unique look and it just looks super classy so i think that's really nice the back is a very, very, very dark brown transparent. You can barely see just a tiny bit of wood grain through there, but 
it's effectively black. And neck pocket, uh, no room, no wiggle. Uh, mentioned this all access neck joint. This is one of the best neck joints in the business, I think. There's, I mean, it's perfectly smooth. It's just, it works great. <laughs> thing I will say is this body is quite heavy which is interesting um, this guitar is over eight and a half pounds which pretty heavy for I mean it's it's a full thickness regular kind of super strat shaped guitar and it's about that size but it comes in pretty heavy so that's either heavy body wood choice I'm sure some of this extra hardware. You'll notice on the back there's quite a bit going on with the uh, zero edge trim. So maybe that adds to the weight, but this is, uh, it's not light. So not my favorite weight for a guitar, but that's all right. It, it holds up and it plays so well that that's, that's fine. We have black Cosmo hardware all over. It's kind of Ibanez's uh, gunmetal uh, chrome color that they put on stuff and it's really nice. The only issue is I feel like the Cosmo colors don't hold up that well over time. This one's basically brand new, so it's fine, but it's worth considering if it's something you're really nervous about, like, oh, how will it last? I've seen some of the finishes kind of tarnish on those ones, so I don't know. Maybe maybe they've improved the recipe since then. Maybe this one's great, but uh, all, all of the knobs and stuff feel nice and smooth. They do not sound super high quality, but maybe they just have a different thing in there, but the action on them is really nice. So I bet we have decent stuff in here. The only thing is that's probably that plastic switch again. We'll, we'll open the back and find out, but that's what it sounds like. So maybe they're still using that thing. I would think they would have switched that out by now, but maybe not. <laughs> And then this guy is called the Edge Zero Trim, and it's a floating, it's like a Floyd Rose replacement, basically, or alternative. And this is Ibanez's proprietary system, and I have had wonderful luck with this thing. Um, I mean, really good. There's hardly been, so as usual, November, Texas, humidity's all over the place, necks are going back and forth. This thing has been very stable, and this thing has been much, I would say, uh, intuit more intuitive and a little easier to deal with than a Floyd. I feel like the minimum and maximum value on these little screws are a little more flexible than the Floyd. Um, maybe that's just in my head, but I feel like there's quite a bit of travel, and I really, I've only had to undo the nut at the top and redo the whole thing like once, which is cool. And there, it, there's quite a bit of other things going on. I won't pick through this bridge, but it, there's all sorts of strange things. Like right here is a little screw, and you take this screw all the way out. Like even the machining on the screw is so good. It's really crazy. But anyways, this somehow goes into the back here and adjusts intonation or something. So it's like a tool that's built in to the trim. And then of course, you got a bar that can go in right here, and there's a bunch of stuff going on back here too. Uh, this controls the stiffness, I believe. And this is just a little thing that tells you how stiff or how loose you have it set. So at first I thought maybe these were two different things, but this is just an indicator for where you're at on this wheel. And then down here, you got a little kind of brass block, but then a rather complicated setup. I'll take the back plate off so you can see it in the B-roll, but basically it's two sets of springs that kind of meet on this bar. And I don't really know what the benefit is, but from what I understand, either you can set it up so it is basically decked or it can do both, or maybe it's just like a stopping point where it kind of stabilizes, but it seems like a cool system. I've never been huge on the whammy bar thing, but 
as far as like tuning stability and ease of use and just overall like perceived quality, like just looking at the machining on this and stuff, it's really nice. It's a really, really nice trim. So I think that was the right pick on this guitar. And like I said, it's been rock solid. So very, very cool trim. Uh, pickups, we got three pickups, two humbuckers and a single, and we have an Air Norton, a True Velvet in the middle and a DiMarzio Tone Zone in the bridge. And that is, from what I understand, a very classic Ibanez setup. Uh, maybe not the single True Velvet. I've never had that on a guitar, so I don't know how long they've been around. But Air Norton, Tone Zone, that's something that quite a few guitars have. Uh, I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what the old Petrucci Ibanez guitars had. Anyways, they're, they sound like Ibanez guitars. So they sound like Treddy DiMarzio guitar sound. Uh, and, and that's fine. It's not my personal favorite tone these days, but this sounds exactly like you'd expect from a nice Ibanez, you know, obviously you're not gonna expect it to sound like a Gibson or a Strat, and it delivers. It's got good overdrive tones. The cleans are kind of, uh, they're crystally. Some might say sterile, they're, they're okay. And overall, I think the guitar sounds basically exactly how you'd expect. Uh, so no big surprises here. I wouldn't say like the tone uh, from the different body wood or, cause a lot of RGs are, I think basswood, but I'm not sure what they use anymore. But either way, this one pretty much sounds like most RGs I've played that have similar DiMarzio pickups in them. And I think they sound good. Personal taste as usual, but check them out and uh, let me know what you think. <laughs> About it a couple other small details we have the jack that kind of goes in like this which is usually fine some people don't love that and that's really it so I mean this is a extremely well-made guitar there is nothing on it that stuck out as you know shoddy work or something they cheaped out on or anything like that it's the highest quality and they're not lying uh, you get what you pay for I guess with Ibanez so I, I think they've done a nice job. Uh, like I said, this neck though, unfortunately is just brutal. Uh, so you gotta want thin, 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 plus wide, plus flat. So if, if that's for you, then you'll like this thing. Otherwise, uh, I don't know, it just cramps my hand up immediately, like right, right there. Uh, so that's been a little difficult. I've played it a bit for just trying to get to know it and learn more about it, but uh, I think I gotta sell it just because it, it's too tough. It's too too drastic of a change for me. I guess I'm I'm setting my old guy guitar ways already. It's only been like a year since I swore off thin neck guitars, but I've noticed they just started to hurt my hand like within 10 minutes now. So it's just not gonna work. So anyways, I think that is it. That is the J Custom, which I've been looking for for a really long time. Really happy to get my hands on it, but uh. I have to pass it on to somebody who uh, make better use of it than I will. So anyways, I hope you found that useful and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>